Grand Theft Auto Online is getting a very cool and groovy new expansion. Rockstar has confirmed rumors that the game is getting a nightclub expansion, which will allow players to buy, customize, and manage their very own nightclubs. This is similar to the existing executive updates, where players could buy and manage other criminal businesses, so you'll, of course, be able to use your nightclub as a front for your illicit endeavors. It sounds like the game will also be getting new music as part of the update. It arrives next month. It's interesting that I'm reading about this uh, today because of uh, how things turn out in Luke Cage Season 2, which uh, I, I will have a review for you very soon. Um, but uh, yeah, nightclubs obviously very big part in uh, storytelling around sort of gangland, uh, gangland activities like this. Uh, so I think this is going to be a natural. And holy crap, hats off to GTA Online for constantly bringing new content out and making that game so enticing. I don't have time to go back and keep playing this thing. I know that Blake plays this game like crazy, um, but it is still making huge amounts of money, but more importantly, making a ton of people very, very happy. That's how you do it. I like the fact that Strauss Zelnick, though, has been saying that single player is not dead, not by a long shot, and obviously there's a huge single player component in Red Dead Redemption 2, but we're going to be seeing a lot of stuff like this, I think, in Red Dead Redemption 2. Maybe not nightclubs with cars in Red Dead Redemption 2, but uh, you know, impressive from Rockstar. Nonetheless, congrats, and um, excited to see what's next with these guys. And every time I read one of these things, it's like, look, I gotta stop everything that I'm doing and load up GTA 5 again and play some GTA Online. Uh, so maybe I will. A few big details about the next big Spider-Man movie have come swinging in. Over the weekend, Spider-Man star Tom Holland revealed that the character's next live-action solo movie will be titled Spider-Man Far From Home, and the news has since been confirmed by Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige. Like last year's Spider-Man Homecoming, the title Far From Home could have multiple meanings for both the character and the story, seeing Peter Parker venture into strange new territory. It's still unclear how the next film will account for the events of Avengers Infinity War, but we'll have to wait and see. It comes out next summer. Before that, the animated movie Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, featuring the Miles Morales version of the character, arrives this December. It's a good time to be a Spider-Man fan, huh? Tom Holland is killing it at his uh, constant joke of revealing all kinds of uh, information when he's not supposed to. He's very good at that. I like this Far From Home title, but that of course sets up Spider-Man 3 to be something uh, with the word home in it as well because they've got to keep this theme going. Um, but yes, it's going to be interesting to see how they answer all of this stuff. Some of the answers, I think, are going to be coming in the Captain Marvel movie, which comes out before Avengers 5? 4? Five? What are we on? 4? Four, Avengers 4, uh, and then then we'll get Spider-Man. But I think a lot of answers are going to start trickling in. It's going to be very hard. you got to do a lot of this on the social medias, a lot of this, a lot of this. You know, you just can't reveal all the stuff because the secrets are coming. But um, I think it has something to do with those zany stones that Thanos was after. All right, the Jurassic World franchise won't be going extinct anytime soon. The new film Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom debuted in North America over the weekend, earning 150 million bucks to give it the fourth biggest opening of the year so far. Overseas, the film is doing even better. It's already earned more than 700 million thanks to the fact that it's been out for as long as two weeks in some territories. Although the numbers are down slightly from the last film, this shows that Jurassic World is still a very profitable franchise for Universal Pictures, and audiences won't be getting sick of dinosaurs for a while. As for what's next, Universal already greenlit a third film a few months ago, so it's currently in development. It will hit theaters in summer 2021. I am one of those people that is sick of dinosaurs on film. I'm sick of the whole Jurassic Park um, sort of uh, mechanics and the theme and the uh, the repeat, the cliches that we've seen. Nothing has come close to touching Steven Spielberg's first Jurassic Park movie, and they keep sort of trying this. And one thing I didn't mention in my review is that the CG effects aren't that great. There's a couple of cool effects. The volcano I talked about a lot, but the, uh, the dinosaurs and stuff, especially when we have dinosaurs and humans together, they're still not that great. They're okay. Um, and, and that's kind of surprising because this thing makes all the money. You'd think that it would be revolutionary every single time they put the dinos on screen with the people, but it's not. I feel like when they first did it in Jurassic Park, it was more realistic, it was more believable, and it was also more surprising. So not surprising, these Jurassic Park movies. And uh, I mean, maybe the next one will be good. That's what I say every time. But maybe the next one will be good because clearly the, the dinosaurs are off the islands. 
because of Volcano. Just, well, you know. Uh, anyways, over to an even bigger film franchise. More details about the future of Star Wars have come in. Last week, reports surfaced that Disney was putting future Star Wars spin-off movies on hold following the poor box office reception of Solo, A Star Wars Story. Disney and Lucasfilm then seemingly denied the report, saying that new films are still in active development, although they didn't say when those new movies might arrive. Now, the Hollywood Reporter quoting unnamed sources within the studio claims that Lucasfilm hasn't slowed down the development of new movies, but they are rethinking their strategy about how to proceed. One source claims that they're trying to figure out how to make and market the new films differently to avoid the same fate as Solo. It's unclear how they'll be changing the films. The next Star Wars film will be Episode 9, which is due out in December 2019. This is the internet's favorite topic right now, is trying to figure out how Disney and Lucasfilm can save their Star Wars franchise. You know, this is a franchise that doesn't really need saving. It's beloved and will be beloved for generations to come. It just needs a, a breath sometimes, and it needs a little bit of uh, rejiggering and refashioning and uh, maybe re-releasing of, uh, of the original trilogy uh, in their untouched form on 4K Blu-ray, Disney, now that you're buying Fox. Uh, but no, I think uh, what we're probably going to see is some interesting new decisions made. I heard a rumor that the Obi-Wan movie that we've been talking about might be a, uh, uh, a series that's put into the streaming service that Disney is working on. So maybe it's like a, it's like a yearly series of films I, that are just available online, like, uh, like one of the Netflix projects or something like that, but for the new Disney streaming service. They are going to have to be smart with all this because we are about to be inundated again with new animated, new live action, and episode 9 information. Um, and I think that's what 2019 is going to be all about. I think there's a new uh, Star Wars celebration um, event that's going to be happening next year where people are going to have a lot of questions about the future of Star Wars. I don't think that um, uh, we have seen the end of spin-off movies. Um, and I think the Obi-Wan movie makes a lot of sense. I think the Boba Fett movie is something to be very concerned about, even if James Mangold is going to be the writer and director of it. Awesome choice there. But the fact that Solo didn't do well, uh, and Han Solo is a much bigger person and a much bigger character within the Star Wars uh, you know, galaxy, I think it's going to be a little dangerous for them to make a Boba Fett movie. And how do they make a Boba Fett movie that's supposed to be a prequel without using Alden Ehrenreich and that association with with him as the the, the Han Solo uh, of a failed movie is not a good thing to kind of reposition and remarket a new uh, bounty hunter flick. They've got they've got some challenges, no question. And I think so much of the future uh, sort of goodwill around Star Wars. Here's what happens: if Episode Nine doesn't meet expectations and doesn't do well um, financially or it misses marks, then they take a break and they take a breather, and then they bring it all back in some epic new crescendos with uh, with you know uh, creators that bring some new hype and some new stories and some new ideas to to the universe into the franchise. It's a very interesting time, and I don't think there's another franchise that we can kind of point to that has had these kinds of dilemmas, you know? And uh, it's going to be very cool to see how this all sort of unravels. I'm, I'm hoping J.J. pulls it off. I loved Force Awakens. I loved the... Uh, the um I don't know, the goodwill that they brought back for Star Wars and the and the, the sense of love that they brought back for Star Wars. Even if you don't love the movie, they did an effective job at sort of recrafting a universe that we cared about with that film. And I hope that they do it again with Episode Nine. but uh, no doubt this will not be the last time that we are talking about this. But it's time to take a look in the rearview mirror at this day and everything cool. <laughs>